Already in part one of this video overview series on Inksoft, we talked about the front end of Inksoft, the user perspective. We also talked about the business opportunity. Now in part two, we're going to jump to the back end or the administrative part of Inksoft. So looking at your homepage, you'll notice in the very top left, there's a sign in function where my mouse is now hovering. So you or your clients can actually log in to their account. Now I should pause to mention that a user can click my account and they have the opportunity to log in. Now if they don't already have login credentials, which is their email address and the password, um, they can go ahead and select create new account. And here they can go ahead and you know, put in their first name, last name, email address, desired password. And they can also by default, they'll be signed in or subscribed to your opt-in email newsletter. So that's how a new user would register for your website. I can go ahead and click sign in now as an admin and I'll go ahead and sign in with my admin credentials. Now when we sign in as an admin, we'll have these core options at the very top. We have sign out, my account, config, orders, and reports. So I want to kind of take you through these functions. Firstly, we'll go ahead and select config. And from the config window, this is kind of a main dashboard to sort of examine your business. We can see things like uh, new orders for the day, most popular products, most popular designs. So we get some basic analytics here. Now you'll also notice that there's video training tutorials here uh, for you to access. So you can go ahead and click on one of these video training tutorials and that's going to play a video right in the workspace of your Inksoft backend. So again, here's a quick sort of snapshot of your web business. Now we can immediately go to our product admin and we can also go right to managing our design templates from these two workspaces here. We can also see our recent order history. We can see metrics for daily sales for the past seven days, the past month, and of course the past year. So really good snapshot of our performance. So this is your default sort of dashboard here. Now we're gonna have a global settings tab. So global settings are functions that you're gonna do uh, that are gonna impact your entire web business. So things like setting up shipping, print pricing, entering in new products into the system, payment gateways, things of that nature. Those are gonna be sort of things that will be shared throughout all of your Inksoft powered web stores. So notice here, you know, we have tabs like general, we have marketing, product management. Here I can edit by manufacturer, supplier. I can create a new product from scratch. So you'll notice if I click on one of these sub functions, it's gonna go ahead and deliver me to a new page where I have access to all of those controls. So we just selected create a new product. Now here I have the ability to use the wizard to create a new product from scratch. I can create a new static product. And a static product is really something that's already decorated. So if you wanna sell a t-shirt with a one color design and lock it, so all the client can do is add it to cart, you'll use this function here. We can add a product directly from the Sandmark catalog. So here I can type in a SKU, or I can click OK, and I can actually browse the entire Sandmark catalog. So here I can do, you know, click on a specific, uh, you know, product category, or I can even click on a manufacturer, so Nike Golf, for example, or New Era, and I can go and browse to a specific product category, and you can see here's a Nike Golf visor, and I can go ahead and click on that particular product. It's going to show me how many are in stock, uh, the price point and I can read all the details in terms of the uh, default product description, the colors that are available, and I can copy this product to the store automatically. So it's a great and easy way to merchandise uh, by adding right from the Sandmar catalog. Now we already have taken the time to upload products from Broder and Alpha and also from Sandmar and define the imprint region. So there's a, a great deal of products already created with all the imprint areas and the product images and descriptions. So you can add right from the Inksoft catalog. So again, the global settings are ways for you to globally define and control things. For example, if you want to set up your print pricing, there's two schedules, one for digital print pricing and then one for screen print pricing. So you can see here, if I click on screen print pricing, I have the ability to create my first or my default screen print price schedule. So you can do things like put your minimum quantity, you can put in how many price breaks you want, and you can assess the uh, maximum number of colors. And then I can put in the pricing for uh, names and numbers, for setup charges, and I can also assign a price for each color. So you can see here, 24 is my minimum in our sort of uh, demo website. So 24 pieces at one color, I would add $5 to whatever garment was selected. So you can also create custom pricing grids. So if you wanna create a custom pricing grid, one for sublimation, one for direct-to-garment printing, of course your screen print pricing matrix, um, you know, maybe your screen printing signage, you can create really custom pricing schedules and assign that or tether it to a product. So you can make this as simple 
uh, as you'd like, or you can really dial in the minutia if that's important to your strategy. Now, uh, so those are the controls in the global settings. Again, these are things that you'll do to, to really impact your total business. And then you have store controls, so you can actually edit the individual store. Now what I can do from global settings is go to customer stores, and here I have the opportunity to navigate to a specific store like Butler Bulldogs is a good example. So once I get to a specific store, you'll see it says Butler Bulldogs Store Controls. Now I have the ability to use all the functionality here in this particular interface to customize my store. So doing things like choosing what products should be available in the store, maybe changing the pricing for the products that are available, adding more products from my main product catalog. So you really have a lot of control here in terms of advertising and messaging, you know, what advertising would be appropriate in this particular area. So you can use these controls to, to really merchandise and market and design the specific store in question. So again, we have global settings to control your main sort of web business, main settings, and then we have store settings where we can control individual web stores. And you see here I can go and edit or delete you know, certain advertisements or add new advertisements. So very, very simple controls to use in the Inksoft backend. Now what I'm going to share with you next is the order function in Inksoft. So once an order has been placed, you know, we need to receive that order and process it. So if I click on the orders function, no matter what web store I happen to be in, this is the very topmost navigation, Inksoft is going to provide me the, the order processing mechanism here. So these are the different buckets that are available through the, the stages here. So we have approve orders, we have order product, we have receive product, print product, and ship product. So from the inception of the order until delivery of the order, Inksoft will help you manage that entire workflow. So what we can do is we can click approve orders, and this is going to show you all the orders that you have to approve. So you can see here a bunch of orders that are sitting in this inbox and we need to approve those. So what I can do is I can click on an order and that's going to show me all the details for that particular transaction or that particular order. Now you'll notice the store that the order happens to generate from. So at the very top this says Acme Apparel Company. This is the store that the order resulted from. Now if the order was placed at Butler Bulldogs, we would see the Butler Bulldog logo at the very top. Now here I have the ability to download and print a work order or a packing slip. So of course the work order is something that you might hand off to your production team, whereas the packing slip is going to be the, uh, the item that actually goes in to the outgoing packaging. So that's the packing slip. Now you'll notice here for the designs we'll have a vector SVG file and we'll also have a layered PDF. So if I go ahead and click on the vector SVG file, we can now download the actual vector design from this order. So I'll go ahead and open this now and you can see exactly what this looks like. We'll go ahead and fire this open and we'll go ahead and open this up in Adobe Illustrator. Of course you could open this up in CorelDRAW and then we could burn, you know, or print screens for um, the screen printing process or we could rip it for the direct -to garment print process, whatever process you may be involved in. So we're down here and skip to the bottom through all these orders and you can see here at the bottom we can approve an order, we can cancel and refund and again, we can print off the work order or we can resend the receipt in the event that the client didn't receive it. So that's kind of the workflow as it relates to order management. Now if I approve this order, it's going to move it to the next bucket. And the next bucket meaning we have to order the product that's involved in this, uh, in this process here. So this is really a print on demand. You're probably not going to stock all of these products. So you can see I just moved or approved an order and now it moved it to order product. This is my signal to now order all of this product from my supplier. So I'm going to go ahead and tick the order in question. I'll click view product list and you can see here's all the products that I need to order to fulfill this particular transaction. Now I can export that to an Excel file. I can email this directly to my supplier and once you're done with this process you can mark it as ordered. And when we do that, that's going to elevate this to the next stage which is receive product. So once the product comes to you, it lands at your facility, you can acknowledge that and once it's landed, I can move this on to print product. And that's going to signal my team that uh, these, uh, you know, we've now received payment, we've received the product, now we're ready to print. So this is the signal to your team that they can now print this particular product. And of course, after you're done printing something, you know, we can go ahead and acknowledge something and say, move to shipping. We have the opportunity to now ship out this particular transaction and complete that order. So that's the complete sort of workflow and cycle of the order process. Now in part one of this uh, tutorial series we talked about the importance of letting your users create their own account. 
Now, if you recall, if a user is in the design studio and they choose to navigate away from the site, they get a prompt. They can't leave until they acknowledge. If you, you know, leave without saving your art content, it will be lost. So in the event that somebody does save their artwork, you can click on shopping carts, and this is where you can see all the saved or shopping cart abandons. So if somebody's in your website and they're designing something and they take the time to save it, again, you're gonna see all of the details for that particular transaction. Now what you can do, you'll notice down here at the very bottom, it says send email. So I can see the details of the, the, the design, whatever somebody was generating. And what I could do now is I can send an automatic email template to them to get them to return. So here I'm gonna select an abandoned email template and I have the ability to then rifle uh, this email template to that particular shopper and it's gonna basically invite them back to complete their transaction. So it's gonna have a link right back to the shopping cart. You can configure this message, so you might wanna include a discount code saying come complete your order, you know, say 5% um, you know, expires at the end of the week. So a really great way to induce people to complete their purchase and their transactions. So that's the ordering function. Now I wanna show you something that's very important, which is the ability to generate reports. Now for every one of your Inksoft stores, in fact, before we go into the report function, I'm gonna share with you, as we go into the store, we have the ability to assign a store commission. So what I can do is I can click on store information, and that's gonna give me the opportunity to update information like you know taxes and, and things of that nature. But in store information, I have the ability to assign a store commission. So we'll scroll down here to the bottom, and here I can do things like add a store markup. I can also do things like add a store commission. So I might wanna say for every order generated at the Butler Bulldog official campus store, we're gonna pay them 12% commission. I can also pay a salesperson commission. So if you have somebody that's out actually developing these relationships and you wanna reward them for, for developing and maintaining these relationships, you can do that by assigning a store commission and also a salesperson commission. So the reporting functions allow you to generate very quickly you have the ability to generate a store report. So let's cl click on the reporting function. And here I have the ability to generate a store report or a salesperson uh, report. So I can go to store commission report and I have the ability to choose a date range and then I can choose the stores that I wanna generate a report from. So let's use the date range, let's use the 1st of January till, uh, until today's date. Let's say we're gonna pay them every you know three months or whatever it may be. I can then go and cherry pick the particular stores that I want to generate reports from. So as you see here, I'm just holding down my control key and I can go and just target you know, particular stores that I want to generate reports from. And I can view a, uh, effectively a print off of all of the commission and order uh, processing through those particular stores. Now I can also page, print this off paginated so I can go file, print, and I can go preview and I can see all of, and this is an eight and a half by 11, but this would show you all the order reports. So here, it'll show you the store commission that was committed. It shows you the date shipped, you know, the orders, the subtotal, and you're paying a commission on the subtotal, not paying a commission on tax and shipping. So this makes the accounting uh, process very, very simple. And here you can deliver your uh, contact, you know, print off with a check as a way to generate revenue. And that's a tremendous, you know, you know power and business opportunity to go to schools and prospects and offer them their very own dedicated campus store, web store, and be able to generate a revenue share back to that organization. They don't have to stock inventory or do POs or you know, whatever it may be. It's a very, very easy process. Now, a few other functions I'm gonna share with you in the back end that are very important is, well, namely, search engine optimization. So there's some, some really powerful functions that relate to SEO. So notice this, we just clicked on the home page. Here, I have the opportunity to click SEO for this page. Now, when I do that, I can establish the page page information, so page title, page description, and keywords, and I can do this for every page in Inksoft. And that includes even individual clip art pages, product pages, so you can really have a really wide you know, SEO position, and you can really give a lot of content to the search engines. So we can use the SEO controls for each page and put in page description, title, and keywords. Now, some other things that you can do, and this really helps with local search results, is you have the ability to geotag a particular store. Now, 86% of web shoppers use search engines to find local businesses. So you definitely want to leverage people searching for custom t-shirts, screen printers, whatever the search phrase may be in your local area. Now, what we can do for every one of our stores is we have the opportunity to add geotags to those particular stores. So you can see here in store address and contact, 
what I can do is I can add geo tags and I can go ahead and look up the geo tags. So let's say that this is a store called customcheerleadinguniforms.com and we're located in the state of Arizona. I can go ahead and type in Arizona. I can zoom to that place and I can copy the longitude and the latitude. But I could also take this further. I could type in Scottsdale and type in that information and we can get the longitude and latitude for that particular region as well. So this is going to put information into the source code of your website to really tell the search engines where you're located. So it provides a lot of value. So here I've just entered in, copied and pasted the longitude and latitude. I'll go ahead and save those changes and that will now be reflected in my store. Now there's some other advanced SEO functions uh, in, in Inksoft as well and that's the ability to do a Google product feed. So here I have the ability to feed Google all of my products. So if you're ever searching Google and let's type in shirts and do a uh, you know, search uh, you know, on, based on this phrase. And if I click on products or shopping from the left hand side, this is going to display you know, uh, basically product feeds for searches. And you can see here your location, Scottsdale, Arizona. So as people search and shop based on their locality, and maybe they saw, uh, shop for specific shirts like sorority t-shirts, Arizona, your products will become visible in this particular feed. So some really powerful SEO controls, definitely some of the best practices in e-commerce and those are made available to you in Inksoft. Now we can't go through all of the functionality in Inksoft, but I wanted to point out that uh, the, you know, we believe that the back end and the user interface is very intuitive and easy. There are video overviews, uh, there is a training guide, and there is tech support. So working through the back end is, is pretty straightforward. And of course you have the training resources and support to assist you with that. Now, a few more things I want to point out that are certainly important is the ability to upload unlimited graphic content, both vector and digital. You also have the ability to upload unlimited products. So definitely a great way to scale and grow your business, add the right content and the right products into your customer stores without having to pay extra for it. Now, if you have any uh, questions or you want to know more about Inksoft, make sure to visit Inksoft.com and make sure to schedule a uh, live personalized presentation with a sales rep to learn more about this new exciting technology.